So you kind of touched on it a little bit. What is the difference? I mean, I think we all understand COVID, but type A, flu type A, type B, the other one you said, yeah. and is one more dangerous than the other? or what, what's Yeah, the- flu A, um, and you know, for the general public, both can be experienced the same way. Long story short is seek medical attention when you feel really bad. But flu A in general tends to be more of the obnoxious one, and flu B tends to be the one that's kind of not as bad, but both can circulate simultaneously. The reason why flu A is more problematic is because of the fact that it changes year to year. It's the one that isn't just a human infection, it's a avian infection and a pig infection. So when they mix and match the the genetic components, that's why every year is like, oh my God, it's now creating a mini epidemic or it can create another pandemic. Flu B is only amongst humans and it doesn't circulate as effectively and so and it tends to be not as problematic as flu a in adults so it's good flu (laughs) it's a it's a better flu but it can still run the gamut of a mild to a severe but in general flu a is the one when there's high levels of flu a activity particularly a strain that's evading vaccination then um, you may have a, a large number of people that are now showing up in the emergency rooms with uh with symptoms Um, There's also flu C um, and then flu D, which is predominantly animals, but nobody really hears about these. From a general public standpoint, does it really matter whether you had, you remember that your doctor told you you had flu A or flu B? It really comes down to um, how is it behaving in you? Having one versus the other doesn't go, I'm going to predict that I will do better. But in general, flu B folks do a little bit better than flu A. So if yeah, you, you know that you're going, you're going to get better. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if this is a nice uh, segue into how do you tell whether it's the flu or something else like a common cold, uh, because that comes up quite a lot. Um, so like I recently just had uh, rhinovirus and I know that because I swab myself because I'm a healthcare worker. And so I just wanted to know what I had. That's a boring cold virus. So in the hospital, when we do respiratory antigen panels, we also do up to 23 um, detection of 23 different infectious agents. And so on that list, I've never paid attention until COVID of the other coronaviruses that are there. And the reason why I've never paid attention to them is because all of us get coronaviruses, uh, not COVID-19, but the pre-existent COVID virus, uh, coronaviruses that are out there. And they give us mild symptoms, runny nose, nasal congestion, maybe a little bit of sinusitis, but not the high fevers and not the fatigability and the muscle aches that are there. So there's um, parainfluenza, respiratory syncytial virus. You may have heard in the news that there's now a vaccine for that because that kills quite a number of people, not as much as flu. Um, But the key distinction is the severity of symptoms. And I think to keep it simple, the folks that feel really bad are the ones in which they may be having a more uh, uh, may be infected with one of the more serious viruses, which influenza is one of those. Hey folks, connecting with your benefits is our primary mission, and the SITREP is providing more options than ever. Subscribe to our free email newsletter, subscribe to our audio podcast channel, or subscribe to our content on YouTube. For details and links, check out the description below.